if we have two fluids, so we have a water and an acid, so here we have sulfuric acid, and if they're at the same temperature, so 25 degrees Celsius, and if we had to add the two, so pour the one out into the other into a beaker, the temperature of this is going to rise. In this instance, it's actually going to rise to 63 degrees Celsius. It's not because of reaction. It is because of the interactions due to the mixing. If we have to look at an energy balance of the system, and we'll take the system to be the water and the sulfuric acid at time 1, and the combined system of the mixture at time 2. So from that, we would look at the energy balance du dt is equal to the summation of hi plus q plus w. The way that we've defined the system, there is no flow in or out, so the hi terms fall away. There is no work, clearly. There's also no w. The reason for that is that we are taking this as the instant these two mix. So we're not waiting long enough for the 63 degrees Celsius for heat to come into or out of that system at time 2. It's an instantaneous system, even though there is a dt. So we're left with a delta u is equal to 0, or we can rewrite that because there's no change of pressure or volume, that the delta h of that system is equal to 0 from time 1 to time 2 of that mixing. So what we're saying is that we have a setup of system 1 of 0.1 of an acid and a water at 25 degrees Celsius. They are then added together such that a mixture forms a temperature of 63 degrees Celsius. And we've just shown that that delta H is equal to 0 from 0.1 to 0.2. If we then bring that down and we cool it to a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, we're then going to have a delta H which is going to be negative. And that, just to fill it in, is the mixture at 25 degrees Celsius. That change in the enthalpy from the mixture to the higher mixture temperature to the lower mixture temperature is the enthalpy of mixing. In the same way, we can see that that is exactly the same as if we just draw a straight line from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3, that delta H for 1, 3, which is not equal to zero, the enthalpy of mixing can be found in textbooks. The best way to understand this is probably going to be through an example. So here we'll look at 20 kilograms of sodium hydroxide at 30 degrees Celsius, which is to be added to 80 kilograms of water at 10 degrees Celsius. The question now is how much heat do we need to add or take away from that system such that the final mixture is at 55 degrees Celsius? Before we start the problem, there's some data that we are going to have to go and find either from a table or in a test or an exam, I will give it to you. So there is CP of the water, which we will assume as a simplified value of 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram. CP of the sodium hydroxide is 1.8. The CP of the mixture will be 3.9. And then the final one that you will have to look up or you'll be given in a test is the enthalpy of mixing, which in this case is negative 12 1,600 calories per mole, and that is for a 20% solution. The first thing that we are going to look at for this problem is, or is going to be what is the energy balance. So in this instance, du dt is equal to the sum of h's plus q plus w. So we already know that there is no work. So there's no work term in this one because there is no mechanical, there's no change in volume, there's no change in pressure. So we're going to cross out the w. The next one is if we've defined the system, so let's maybe just draw that quickly. As we did in before, we've got two beakers, which then go to a beaker which is slightly bigger. The system boundary is going to be the small first beaker, the small second beaker. Add them up, there's the full beaker, so there is nothing going into or out of that system. It's closed, so the sum of H's term is going to drop away. So we're then left with an energy balance of du dt is equal to Q, or we can rewrite that as delta U. There is no change in volume or in the pressure of the overall system, so we can write that as delta H, which is then equal to Q. So that is our starting point. We now need to work out in order to find the final Q, the heat gained or subtracted, what is the delta H, and that will give us the Q. 
this delta H that we are going to have to calculate is going to be made up of the final conditions, which will be the entropy, enthalpy rather, of the solution, minus the initial conditions, which will be the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide, as well as the enthalpy of the water at the original conditions. So the enthalpy at the original conditions of the sodium hydroxide, so that is the HN, and that is at 30 degrees Celsius, and just as a reminder, it's going to be one atmosphere and it'll be for 20 kilograms. So that will be the initial conditions for the sodium hydroxide. And that is going to be equal to the mass of the sodium hydroxide multiplied by the enthalpy of formation at standard states. So that will be the enthalpy of the N at standard state. Plus, and that will be typically 25 degrees Celsius. So we now need to heat it from 25 degrees Celsius up to 30 degrees Celsius. Celsius of the CP of the sodium hydroxide DT. Substituting the numbers in, it's 20 kilograms of sodium hydroxide. At this stage, we don't need to worry about the HN. We'll just leave it as HN, and we'll come back to that later, and you'll see why. Plus the integral of CP. And if I do this, we end up with 1.8 from the CP value in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, multiplied by the DT of 30 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius, and that will come down to final answer of 20 times the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide plus 180, and that will be kilojoules. So that is for the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide at the initial conditions. We can do the same thing for the enthalpy of the water at the initial conditions, and that was 80 kilograms of water at 10 degrees Celsius. So at 10 degrees Celsius for 20 kilograms of water. So exactly the same way as we had up here, we're going to have the enthalpy is equal to the mass times by the heat of formation plus the integral for Cp dt. So enthalpy of the water is equal to the mass of the water multiplied with by the heat of formation of the water. And just as a quick fix here, this mass I actually multiplied by the entire bracket, if that wasn't clear in the maths. So that should be the mass of the water multiplied by the enthalpy of formation of the water, and that is at 25 degrees Celsius. We need to be at 25 degrees Celsius though. So it's going to be the integral from 10 down to 25, so we're going from 25 to 10, Cp of the water times dt. If we then substitute the values in, it is 20 kilograms. Again, multiplied by the enthalpy of the water, we will leave in as enthalpy of water, plus the integral of the Cp water, which was 4.2, and the difference in the temperature is 10 minus 25 degrees Celsius. If I substitute all of those values in, the enthalpy of the water will then come out as 80 multiplied by enthalpy of formation of the water minus 5040 kilojoules. Just a quick correction to that last little bit. There should be 80 kilograms of water, so the final equation in that was correct for 80 HW. The final one that we want in this system is the enthalpy the enthalpy of the solution or that mixture. So the enthalpy of that mixture is going to equal to the mass of the sodium hydroxide multiplied by the enthalpy of formation of the sodium hydroxide plus the mass of the water multiplied by the enthalpy of formation of the water. So that's what's going into the system. We are then going to add and now it's the number of moles that we need to add multiplied by the delta H of mixing that we were given. If you see the units of the delta H of mixing, you'll understand why we need to multiply by the number of moles. However, we also need to take that and we need to add to that the mass of the entire solution, so that's everything added together, times by the integral from 25 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius because we wanted to heat it or cool it, multiplied by Cp of the solution delta T. Okay, so now we need to put all these numbers in. So the enthalpy of solution 
of that solution is equal to 20 was the kilogram the mass of the original sodium hydroxide multiplied by the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide plus the next one mass of water enthalpy of water that was 80 times the enthalpy of the water so we still don't know what the HN the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide and the enthalpy of the water is however and this is where I'm not going to do this out for you now if we look at all of this we have the numbers in terms of the number of moles the heat of mixing mass of the solution and CP s so if you go and back up to this and these are in the notes you can now work that out and you should get a value of minus one four six eight zero kilojoules as the value for h s we said we wanted to know what is the delta h and we said the delta h was equal to h s minus so that's the final conditions minus the initial conditions of the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide plus the enthalpy of the water we have just solved for all three of those so we've got the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide which we calculated plus the water and then finally the enthalpy of the mixture or the solution of s so substituting all of those in the hs we have 20 plus the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide plus 80 enthalpy of the water minus 14680 kilojoules that's for hs minus the enthalpy of n so that's 20 hn plus 180 kilojoules and then we needed to add to that the enthalpy of the water and that we found was 80 minus 5040 so that's 80 enthalpy of the water and I've forgotten that number minus 540 5040 Okay, so that is now our final form of the equation for the change in enthalpy. So why did we not get the enthalpy of the sodium hydroxide of the water? So if you now see, we've got a 20HN minus a 20HN, so those two are going to cancel. We have an 80HW and an 80HW, so those two are going to cancel. And you are simply left with numbers, so the final value delta H is equal to minus 9815 kilojoules if you add all of these together. So the question had asked us how much heat needed to be added or lost and we had said that the delta H was equal to Q so therefore the Q is equal to the minus 9815 and given that that is negative it means that we need some cooling so even though we're increasing the temperature to 55 degrees Celsius the overall system needs to be cooled it's also important to note that nowhere in the question were we asked for or did we actually need the temperature after the mixing.